Well, hi kids. I'm showing a control net called IP Adapter Plus Base. It's an add-on for stable diffusion that generates AI art based on a selfie or a similar face photo. So today I'm using my iPhone because that seems like a good place where a lot of photos of friends and family might be. My friends and family were generated by this person notexist.org, a great resource for royalty-free faces. So no relatives or children were harmed making this tutorial. Now the app I'm using is Draw Things. It's a full-featured client for the Stable Diffusion Cinematic Universe, but rewritten in Swift to run quickly or quicker on Apple Silicon. It's free on the app stores for Mac and iOS. And just in case you're new to Draw Things or maybe Stable Diffusion 2, I'll take the next minute to walk you through the basic setup. To start, I'll swipe left to go to the Canvas window. Up the top, click on the project's name to open the project's menu. I'll create a new project and rename it. Now I'll swipe right to set up Stable Diffusion. In the basic menu, I'll start with the default parameters so we're all on the same page. I'm loading SDXL Base 8-Bit. These settings work for my iPhone 13 mini, but there's also an IP adapter for SD 1.5, which should work more or less the same on older devices. And I'm adding an acceleration LoRa called Hyper 8, which brings my render time down to just over a minute. Hyper 4 is even faster if you're experimenting and not too worried about image quality, but I get better results with Hyper 8. Now very quickly through the rest of the parameters, I set the steps to match the acceleration LoRa. In this case, it's eight or nine. And with step count under 10, my negative prompt will be ignored and text guidance is shadow locked to one. I'll render at 1024 by 1024. And under the advanced menu, set the sampler to Euler A trailing. Go. I'll leave the upscaler off for now, and I'm switching tile decoding on. Now, simple image to image works with any model. It's built in, so you don't need to set up any control net or anything. You just load an image from the paste or the camera icon. Let's reload the canvas. Click and hold to bring up the detailed menu and navigate to the face photo. This loads the image into the canvas. And back in the basic menu, find the strength setting under the image to image switch. Now the T button switches back to text prompt only. And the strength slider sets how strong the text prompt is as compared to the image in the canvas. And yes, the buttons seem reversed from the slider. I think that's intentional. We'll set it to 50% anyway. Now, image to image can do some things like I can prompt the image to look older or maybe change superficial features like eye color but it's idealized, like, like all AI. Image to image isn't very accurate to the original face, unless I set the text prompt strength really low, and then it isn't very accurate to the prompt. Even adding a style LoRa, like this flat art LoRa I downloaded from Hugging Face, I can't reposition the face. It's always the same composition as the canvas image. It has to do with how image to image uses the canvas as the first step. So image to image is not that accurate and not very flexible either. Well, here's where mood board steps in. Now the canvas has different image input layers that align with the canvas. They're called layers and draw things, but they're not like Photoshop layers. These are more like image input scanners that feed data to the control nets. So I'm opening the Layers menu, this button at the bottom right of the canvas, and selecting Load, and then Mood Board. And I'm adding our face shot. 
It's all pink behind a weighted slider, which we can adjust when we're mixing multiple images, but leave it to 100 because IP adapter plus face uses just the one image. If your input image is not just a headshot like I have here, IP adapter face is going to crop your image to just the face. You won't see any difference in the interface, but I think you probably lose some quality. I'm getting good results with these tight face shots. Now the ratio of the input image shouldn't matter, but the ratio of your final render does need to be one to one or square, otherwise the face will stretch and distort. Now back in the basic menu, let's make sure to switch image to image strength back to text only because we're using the mood board now, not the canvas. Open the control drop down and add IP adapter plus face. Every control has a weight slider and sliders to set the start and end. Now with the full settings, I got an image with the mood board face on a little girl, but it's not blending with the art lore at all, or my prompt really for that matter. There, There is a pixie behind the little girl. Well, it's putting them both in the render, but it's not blending the concepts at all. I know what I want. I want the style from the Laura, but the face from the mood board. So back on the control, I'll clamp the end time to around two thirds, or in other words, high 60s to low 70s. And this is just a guess. IP adapter will stop contributing at the two thirds mark. And so all the detail refinement in the final steps will be done by the Laura alone, not the mood board. I'm also going to guess at setting the weight slider lower. I'll try 50%. And as a mistake, I ease off on the start time a little too. But now I don't see the girl's face at all. This is just the line art from the Laura. So I'm going to set my strength higher and I'm going to put that start slider back to zero. My next try brought her face back, but it's a little clear, almost photographic. But she has a texture painted on her face, almost like clown makeup. It's mixing the mood board and the Laura, but it's not what I want. So after some adjustment between the three sliders, I've got a blend of her face shaped from the mood board with the outlines and textures from the art Laura. She's very stylized, more illustration than photograph, but I can adjust to taste with the sliders. Now more weight for the photo real face from the mood board and less weight to get more of the prompt and the Laura. Now, as fun as plus face is, it's a little limited. It just sees the face as it looks on the mood board. If the face is straight on, well, that's what you get in the render. Where the face is turned to a slight profile, the renders will also be turned, but sometimes reversed. I don't think it has any real understanding of the face as a 3D object. So this is not a replacement for a character, Laura. Plus face is not going to generate new face angles or be useful to generate new training data for you. But you can definitely turn your children into a pixie or cowboy illustrations. Maybe turn your husband into a 3D noir detective or star in your own comic book. If you have access to your own face, which you probably do, you can create any expression as you go with photos on your phone. So give this video a like if you think other people will find it useful and subscribe if you want to be notified when I upload the next one. I have tutorials for the desktop version of Draw Things and I will be making more iPhone tutorials like this one. Well, that's all I have time for today. As usual, I hope you had a learn and I'll see you next time.